Meg, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Facebook event on a desktop computer. Let's get to it. So here we are on the back end of my Facebook page, and what we're going to do is head on over to the left sidebar and scroll down until we see events. We're going to click on that. And here, what you can see is a little analytic overview of any events that you've recently had. If you had any past events, you would also see them down here. And if you had any upcoming events, they would pop up here. So what we're going to do is click any of the create event buttons. And we're going to choose the in-person option. We'll also kind of breeze through the online option later on, but the in-person one has the most settings. So we're going to cover that first. Also, let's say that your event is in person, but you're also welcoming people online. I would recommend creating the in-person event. And then what you can do is in the event name or in the description, you can note that the event is also available online, that people can register and access it online as well. So here we can see the kind of live view. And then this is the editor panel. So you're gonna add the event name and then the date and the start time and if you have an end time you're going to add that as well so it's simple you just click on the calendar and you can choose the date and then you can scroll through for the time or you can just type in to make it easier and we're just going to call that good so another feature that's pretty snazzy is recurring event. So let's say that you are having a conference and the event is lasting for three days. You can set a daily frequency and you can set the start date and then the end date. Whoops, so many buttons. And then this would be the start time and the end time. But let's say that your start and end time isn't the same on all all three dates so we click that customize and then you can see here this is where you can customize the individual time so you just click update and then you're good so frequency is also great if you have a weekly event or a yearly event so we're just gonna do weekly and let's say your event is on Tuesday the start date would be, so today's January 25th, so that would be the start date. You can have an end date. If your event, if you plan on doing this event indefinitely, I would just go as far out as you can. You'll notice when you can go no further. So just choose the farthest date possible, and then what you can do is you can go back into your event in a few months, and you can just keep extending, extending, extending. So you're gonna click save once you're done with the time. You cannot change anything in regards to the privacy settings because you're on your Facebook page. This is different if you're on your Facebook personal profile. But because we're on a Facebook page, the event is automatically set to public. Now here you can add a description about the event. You can also add if the event is available online. You don't have to add any links, any ticket links because we'll get to that a little bit later. You can also choose a category, which is helpful. Uh, Facebook tends to just promote things the more filled out they are. So choose the category that works best for you. And then, whoops. You have to make sure everything's filled out or else you will not get the blue next button. And as I'm going through, you'll see things start to change on this side as well. So with the location, you can add a you can type in a page name. Here we go. As long as that page has a location set, you can also type in a general town. And then automatically the event is going to choose your Facebook cover photo as the event cover photo. And you'll notice that it doesn't fit because a Facebook event cover photo is sized differently than a Facebook page 
cover photo. And what I would, so what I would recommend doing is going to Canva, which is a free cloud-based graphic design software and creating a Facebook event cover photo. It'll automatically be sized correctly and then you can upload it. That's if you want to use a graphic. If you want to just use a photo, then you can upload it and you can just drag it around like I've been doing. And you can see the preview here as well as here when you drag it, whatever works for you. This is where you add your ticket URL, whether it's a direct link on your website or Eventbrite, whatever works. We're just gonna do, just to fill that in. I don't think you have to have a link, but we're just gonna do it. So before you publish your event, we're just gonna quickly go through event settings. Co-host is a super snazzy feature. Let's say that you have somebody else who is co-hosting this event and they have a Facebook page. You can type in their Facebook page and add them to the event. And what will happen is they'll receive a notification asking them to accept co-hosting this event. If they click accept, the event will automatically be added to their Facebook page. So you only have to create the event once and it shows up on both of your Facebook pages and it shows that both of you are the co-hosts. So this calls out who else is involved in the event and also gets your event out there. I know some chambers of commerce allow members to add them as a co-host just because chambers tend to have a wider reach. So if you're able to do that, you can add the chamber as your co-host and then your your event will show up on their page, which is pretty snazzy. So that's where you do that. Um, I'm not sure if you can add friends from a Facebook page only because there tends to be some privacy setting around that, but I'll show you a little workaround that may work later on. Show the guest list means if you want to show who has clicked that they are going to your event. I'm just going to click, I'm clicking the slider to turn that off. And I usually turn this off because I want anybody to be able to post in the event, whether they're an admin or just somebody in general. And what that does is let's say that somebody asks a question in the event discussion, then that basically shows the question answer for everybody else who may have that question, as long as you answer that question. And it also allows you to just kind of connect with people better and you can make posts in the event and people can comment, all of that. But what I do recommend is having that posts must be approved by a host or co-host. So that way you can make sure that any posts that will be going on your event meets your, your own community guidelines and all of that. And then this is a, another feature. You can allow people to send you a Facebook message about the event. I usually have this turned off because any questions I like to be public so that way people can see the questions and I don't have to keep re-answering the same question, but also too, when someone posts in on an event, typically everyone who has noted that they're going or are interested in the event get a notification. This is huge because it keeps the event at the forefront of their mind. So super handy. Once you're done, you're going to click save and then you are going to publish your event. So here is our event. If we scroll up, we can see our event cover photo. And then we can scroll down and we can see kind of the general info. So down here is where you would see who's going, who's interested. If you click see all, you'll see the actual people. And here are a few extra little handy things that you can do if you click on invite guests from here I believe it allows you to invite the people who liked your page but if you want to invite your friends what you do is you click on the profile picture here switch from who you're basically switching who you're interacting as so you're going to switch from your page to yourself and then when you click well also too this gives you a view of how your event looks to the public uh, where did that go? So in order to invite your own friends, you're just going to click that invite button and you'll see a list of your friends pop up and you'll just click next to their names and then send invite and you're going to be good to go. But we are actually going to head back to our page. So same thing, you can click that invite here and you can invite people who've liked your page. This is also another handy feature. If you click share, you can copy the link and you can share it to your other social media platforms, to your email newsletter, et cetera, et cetera. You can also share this to a page, like another page that you manage. You can share this event as 
a post to your page or again another page that you manage and then I haven't tried this one out reach people who indicated interest in your other events but basically what that means is that if people in the past have clicked interested in one of your events if you click this then they will get notified that you have an event and then if your page is part of a group you can share to a group so from here you can also edit. You'll notice that there's not really a place where you can edit your cover photo by hovering over it. So you're going to want to click add cover photo and that will allow you to edit it. And then add, edit your location. You can edit your description, do all that on the back end here. Or you could click edit. It's whatever works for you. Now in order to see the discussion, so if anybody made a post on your event, you would click discussion. And then you can add a post, which is snazzy because, again, everybody who has shown interest in the event will be notified. And this is basically where posts made by you or posts made by anybody else would appear. So before we go and create our online event, I'm going to show you how to delete an event. So what you do is you click the dot, dot, dot here. And we are going to cancel the event. So there's two options. Cancel the event notifies everybody who showed interest in the event. Delete event is like an incognito way of doing it. Nobody gets notified and that's what I'm going to do since this was not an actual event. But if you select cancel event, it's super handy for people who may have planned on going to the event. They'll automatically get a notification that the event was canceled. So now we're just going to breeze through the general settings of online events by clicking create event, waiting for that to load. We're going to select online and we have two options, general or class. Let's start with general and then you choose free or paid and from there it'll basically take you to the options that we had when creating our other event, our in-person event. Right now we're just going to click back. Let's say that you selected class instead. You can choose single class or a course of classes which is handy if you have a class happening multiple times, kind of like a recurring event that we did earlier. And then just like before, you click free or paid and create your event from there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that tutorial helped. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you're looking to learn even more about Facebook, including tips and tricks such as how to boost your engagement and what to post in the first place, check out my online mini course, Facebook Facelift, which is linked down below. Thank you again. I will see you in the next video.